Hi, in this video we're going to look at some basic annuity formulas. In the previous videos we looked at how to symbolically represent values of annuities at different valuation dates. So now we'll look at some formulas to help us numerically compute those values. So let's get started. This was the picture that we saw from the previous video. This is a basic annuity and we got different valuation dates and the symbols that represent the value of the annuity at these different valuation dates. I've got the angle I, you know, A, you know, a angle in at I, A double dot angle in at I. And I made this comment before that oftentimes when there's no ambiguity or no confusion, you just leave the eyes off. And I'm going to do that in the rest of this particular video. So let's just pick a valuation date and get started. Let's say that I pick the valuation date that's, uh, that's shown and the uh, value of the annuity at that valuation date is represented by a double dot angle N. It's the total present value of all the payments. That's how it's defined. That's how you value these things is you look at what's the total present value of all the payments. I'm going to use an acronym VEP to represent value each payment. The acronym describes exactly what you're going to do. We're going to value each payment. So the a double dot angle N is equal to by a VEP approach, I'm going to value each payment, look at the first payment, value it at the valuation date. So the value of the first payment at the valuation date, I don't need to accumulate the payment. I don't need to discount the payment. The payment is already at the valuation date. So its value is just the payment one. Now the next payment, the next payment of one is one period after the valuation date. So I need to discount that payment of one back one period and of course you do that by multiplying that one times a V so I just get a one plus V the second term is V and I continue this pattern now the last term you gotta be a little bit careful on this because the last term uh, I'm sorry the last payment of one is actually being discounted for n minus one periods and so the value of the last payment at the valuation date is a v to the n minus one it's a couple of ways to recognize that you can just actually just count the periods if you like or you can uh, you can look at the pattern in the expression so I've got a one plus a v and so forth the one is the first term the v is the second term if I continue I'd have a v to the second the v to the second would be the third term and likewise v to the third would have been the fourth term so the nth term actually has an exponent of an n minus one and so that's why it's a v to the another reason why it's v to the n minus one I want to recognize that this is a geometric sum with a ra ratio of V. The ratio is, the common ratio on a geometric sum is the expression that you have to multiply a term by in order to get to the next term. And you can actually view that just looking at the first two terms. To go from the first term of a 1 in the sum to the second term of V, I'd multiply by V. So that's going to be the common ratio throughout that geometric sum. Now we've talked about this in previous slides, uh, I believe, that the value of a geometric sum is the first term minus the first omitted term divided by one minus the ratio. In this case, the first term is one. The first omitted term is exactly what it says. If you were to continue the pattern, what's the first term that you would have that's not there right now? If I would continue that pattern, I got a one plus a V and so forth. I, my final term is a V to the N. So the next term, if I was continue the pattern, would be a V to the N. That's the first omitted term then, V to the N. And then the ratio we discussed before, that's a V. So this expression values to a one minus a V to the N divided by one minus V. I'm going to simplify it a little bit. Uh, you'll see why. You'll see why I'm going to simplify it to get another expression. And I'm going to do it just by recognizing that the V value in the denominator I can think of as a 1 minus D. And when I substitute that in, the ones add out. I'm just left with the D and the denominator. So that's what I'm going to choose to remember to be uh, what I call the closed rule formula for this the closed rule formula for an a double dot angle in. So I'm going to have a VEP expression. VEP means describes the situation, value each payment, or I'll have a closed rule formula. The closed rule formula is just usually a single term expression that's representing what the value of the annuity is. Okay, so now the rest of the video, I'm just going to change the valuation date and do the same thing with other symbols. So if I change the valuation date, by backing it up one period, the value of the annuity at that time is an A angle N. Now I'm thinking of this annuity as the 
present value or the annuity itself I'm kind of thinking of as an annuity immediate a angle n is the present value of the annuity immediate and the value and when I VEP when I look at the VEP expression I'm valuing each payment the first payment I need to discount one period so that's a I, I multiply that one times a V I got a V the second payment I discount two periods so I multiply that second payment of one times a V squared so I get a V plus V squared recognize the pattern and the last term is going to be a V to the n now that's also a geometric sum and I could go through the same process that I did before to find a closed roof formula for it. However, I want to use a different approach. I want to use what I've already shown you, which is that the closed roof formula for an A double dot angle N is a one minus V to the N over D. And I want to recognize one of these basic relationships between the A angle N and the A double dot angle N that we talked about in a previous video, namely that the A double dot angle N is a value at the time of the first payment where the A angle N is one period before. So I would need to discount the value of A double dot angle N by one back one period and I do that by multiplying by a V and so a angle n is an a double dot angle n times V now I substitute in the a double dot angle n I have the closed roof formula for that that's 1 minus a V to the n over D and so I have that times V and then I recognize that D is an I times V and then the V's shown will cancel off and then the closed roof formula then for an a angle n is a 1 minus V to the n over I so let's change the valuation date and go through the procedure again. Let's look, for instance, at this valuation date. That's one period after the last payment. I'm looking, that represents, the, that is the present value of the annuity due. That's the present value of an annuity due. So the symbol I have for, the, I'm sorry, the accumulated value of an annuity due, the symbol I have for that is an S double dot angle in. The VEP expression for that, I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'm going to start with the last payment this time. So look at that last payment of one and value it at the valuation date, which means I need to accumulate it for one period. And so I multiply that last payment of one by a one plus I to get to its value at the valuation date. Then I value each payment. So the next payment, the one payment, the payment of one immediately before the last one, which I actually don't have shown, would need to be accumulated two periods. So its value at the valuation date would be a one plus i squared. And I continue that pattern. Notice that the first term I have in parentheses, a one plus i has an exponent, exponent of one. The second term, one plus i squared, has an exponent of two. That's valuing the the second to last payment. So actually valuing the nth payment here would I would have an exponent of one plus uh, of n. So the expression that values the last payment at the valuation date would be a one plus i to the n. Once again, that's a geometric expression. I could use the fact that it values to the first term minus the first omitted term all divided by one minus the ratio. However, I want to go through the same approach that I did a little while ago. I have an a double dot angle n as one minus v to the n over d. And I know a relationship between the A double dot angle N and the S double dot angle N, namely the valuation date for A double dot angle N is N periods before the valuation date for an S dot double, S double dot angle N. So I would need to, uh, I would need to accumulate an A double dot angle N N periods. And I do that by multiplying by one plus I to the N to get an S double dot angle N. So then, once again, I substitute in for A double dot angle N. I substitute in its closed roof formula, 1 minus V to the N over D. With this, I multiply the 1 plus I to the N. I distribute it across the numerator, and I would get a 1 plus I to the N minus a 1 because the V to the N, remember, is 1 over 1 plus I to the N. And so when I multiply that times the 1 plus I to the N, I just get minus 1. There you have it. That's the closed roof formula then for an S double dot angle N. Finally, if I, change, if I put the valuation date here, the symbol that represents the value of the annuity at that valuation date is an S angle N. That's the, present, that's the accumulated value of an annuity immediate, a basic level annuity immediate. The VEP expression I could get, again, very easy. I hope that you, you, these VEP expressions are, are going to be easy for you. They should be. Just VEP describes exactly what you're doing. Value each payment. The last payment of one, I don't need to discount or, or, or accumulate anywhere. It's already at the valuation date, so its value is a one. The payment before that, I would need to accumulate one period, so that's uh, I do that by multiplying by one plus i. I continue this pattern, and the last, uh, actually the first payment has a value at the valuation date of a one plus i to the n minus one. 
I'm gonna go through the similar process. This time I'm gonna look at an A angle in, which in a previous video I know has a closed roof formula of one minus V to the N over I. And similar with the double dots, the relationship between an S angle in and an A double dot angle in is I need to accumulate the A double dot, I'm sorry, I'm not doing double dots anymore. The relationship between an S angle in and an A angle in is I need to accumulate the A angle in value in periods, and I do that by multiplying by the one plus n, one plus i to the n that's shown. Now substitute in the closed roof formula for a angle n, namely one minus v to the n over i, distribute the one plus i to the n across the numerator, and I get the closed roof formula for an s angle n is the one plus i to the n minus one over i. So let's kind of look at a, a, a kind of a summary of the annuity formulas, uh, or the annuity closed roof formulas, I should say. I've got these four formulas. The top two formulas are the, respectively, the present value and accumulated value of an annuity immediate. The bottom two formulas are respectively the present value and accumulated values of an annuity due. Let me make this comment before I forget to. An annuity immediate has payments at the end of each period. Now remember, I is interest that I is representing the interest rate, and interest is paid at the end of the period. So when I'm valuing these closed roof formulas, when I'm using these closed roof formulas for an annuity immediate, the denominators are I because the I is at the end of the period corresponding to the payments being made at the end of the period. Similarly, in the denominators of the lower two formulas, I have a D discount discount is paid at the beginning of the period and the payments for those annuities are at the beginning of a period. So that's how you kind of remember whether you put an I in the denominator or a D in the denominator is, are you dealing with an annuity immediate formula? Annuity immediates have payments at the end of the period. I'm going to use an I because interest is at the end of the period. Or is it annuity due formula? Annuity due has payments at the beginning of the period. I use a D in the denominator because discount is paid at the beginning of the period. Now, I want to focus on just that top left formula that I've got highlighted in red. My claim to you is that that's the only one that you really need to know. You'll be able to easily get the other formulas from that one formula in red. And if I want to get, notice if I want to get the double dot formulas from the non-double dot formulas, uh, I just replace the I by D. That's easy enough to remember. And if I want to get the S's, the S or the S double dot from the A and the A double dot, I multiply by one plus I to the N. I use that fact that the valuation dates are in periods apart on those. So I really only need to focus on that one expression that's in red. And remember that one expression, the other ones are, are easily derived from, from that one. Okay, let's now look at perpetuity formulas. I wanna make a couple of comments on that. Of course, the, there's no accumulated formulas, there are no S's, there's no accumulated values. There's not like an S or an, or an S double dot with a, perpetuity, there are only A's, the only present values. If I have this valuation date, then the symbol that's going to represent the present, the, the value of the annuity at that valuation date, I'm thinking of then that, I'm sorry, it's a perpetuity, but I'm thinking of that perpetuity as a perpetuity immediate. Immediate symbols don't have the double dots, so that's a present value of a perpetuity immediate. I use an A, and at the angle N, well, N is representing the number of payments, so N would be infinity here. The VEP formula is very easy with this thing. Just value each payment. So the first payment has a value of, uh, at the valuation date of a V. The second payment at the valuation date has a value of V squared and so forth. And the payments just continue forever. Now this is a, uh, remember the value of a geometric sum is the first term minus the first omitted term divided by one minus the ratio. But this is, this is a geometric series. It has no omitted terms, in other words. The, sum, the, 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 the terms go on forever. And so you just leave off the first omitted term part in order to value a geometric series and you just get that its value is the first term divided by one minus the ratio. The first term in this expression is V. One minus the ratio, the ratio was also V. And keep in mind, remember as we did before, one minus V reduces to just a D. And the D I can think of as a I times V, the V's would cancel off, and then the closed roof formula then for an A angle infinity is one over I, just a one over I. That's the present value then of a pre basic perpetuity immediate. 
I want to make one comment with respect to this. Uh, once again, if you remember this formula, A angle N formula, 1 minus V to the N over I, I can get the A angle infinity V uh, closed root formula from, from the formula in red very easily by plugging in an infinity for V and recognizing that V to the N is or going to zero as, as N goes to an infinity. In other words, the V to the infinity is zero. Remember, the V value is between 0 and 1. So let's say you have a V value of like 0.9. Well, you look at 0.9 raised to higher and higher powers, and that gets closer and closer to 0. So V to the infinity is just going to be 0. So A angle infinity is just going to be uh, 1 over I. That's the closed roof formula. Let's change the valuation date. So I'm thinking of this now as a perpetuity due, and the present value would be an A double dot angle infinity. The VEP expression would be 1 plus V and so forth. Remember the A double dot angle N is 1 minus V to the N over D. Now I'm going to plug in an infinity for N. Recognize that V to the N is 0 and I see that the closed root formula for an A double dot angle infinity is just a 1 over D. Okay, so that's the present value of a basic perpetuity due is 1 over D. Symbolically, A double dot angle infinity you got the VEP expression in the closed root formula. Finally, the slide gives me a little summary of everything. And once again, I have highlighted in red the one formula that I kind of remember and base everything off of that one formula. Whether I'm getting a, uh, so what I remember is the A angle N closed root formula. And then I can get an S angle N by multiplying by one plus I to the N. And then I can get the A double dot and the S double dot similarly. A angle infinity, A double dot angle infinity, those are just the A angle N and the A double dot angle N formulas, recognizing that V to the N is zero. Okay, so there was a lot of stuff in that slide. This is what we're going to use in order to get numeric values for these symbols. And so there's gonna be a lot of work to do. Uh, we'll, we'll do a lot of practice exercises on this. All right, I'll see you in the next video.